Welcome to the Advanced Hobby Lab. Today, I'm introducing a new project that I call Project Microhex. In this project, I will be designing and building a hexapod robot from scratch. This is going to be the first of a multi-part series where I detail the different steps in the build process. In this episode, I will be going through the design phase. I will look at the features that I need to have and the features that I want to have as well as look at the known knowns and known unknowns that could hinder progress. The primary goal of this project is to learn. I don't feel like we learn as much when we take a design that someone else has made and we just assemble it. I feel like we learn more when we do the design work ourselves. We can then learn why things were designed the way they were and we can learn what works and what doesn't through our own experiences. My hope is that this work will help others get more involved with robotics. To that end, I want to make this an affordable build with parts that are easily sourced. I have already given this project the working title of Microhex, indicating that I want this to be a small hexapod in order to keep the cost down. I plan to open source these designs when the project is done so that others can build one of their own or design their own mods. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get the latest project updates. The first step in any project like this is to do research. I want to look at what other people have already done so I can learn from their experiences and hopefully design something unique. As you can see, there are already a lot of existing designs. I've identified two main categories of designs, bilateral and radial. The bilateral design is more insect-like with one clear line of symmetry down the center and three legs on each side. The radial design is more like that of a starfish. Each leg is equally spaced around the center. Each has their pros and cons, however, I think I'm leaning towards the bilateral design because there's a more obvious front and back, which I think will make it easier to steer. I plan to build this around the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. The Pico is a very versatile microcontroller and a very small footprint. The Pico W variant supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which I think would be a lot of fun to play around with. It is also very affordable at about only $6 US, and I already happen to have a few lying around that I would like to use. As a hexapod, it will have six legs. A common design is to have three servos per leg, which gives me a total of 18 servos. I'm going to use micro servos to help reduce the cost. With each micro servo costing between $1 and $2 US, they are still one of the most expensive parts of the build. As this is a mobile robot, it must be battery powered. I want the battery to power both the Pico and the servos, so I only have one battery to manage. 3D printing has revolutionized the DIY robotics community. It makes it easy to design the exact parts that you need. When I'm done, I can release the SCL and step files so others can more easily reproduce my work. For this reason, I'm going to use 3D printing for all the mechanical parts in this robot. There are a number of features that I would like to add, but are less important, and I'm not sure if they will make it into the first version. First off, the Pico W variant has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. I would love to have Bluetooth support on this robot. With that, I could control the robot remotely from my phone. That would of course require a lot of extra programming, including the creation of an Android or iPhone app. It might be easier to set it up with Wi-Fi. With that, I could create a web server on the robot, which would allow me to send commands via HTTP. I could then control it from a web page that should work on all platforms. In my spot micro build, I added an LCD display, which was incredibly helpful for checking status. I would like to do the same thing for this project. If I managed to add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, the LCD display could be used to display the IP address and Bluetooth device name to make it easier to find and connect with. Since this is battery powered, I would like to add a battery charging feature. It is a minor annoyance in my spot micro build when I have to open it up in order to replace the battery. It would be convenient if I could charge the battery by plugging the whole robot up to something like USB-C. In a similar vein, I would like to add battery feedback. My spot micro build can't monitor its own battery, so it will just run until it dies. The Pico, unlike the Raspberry Pi, has an analog to digital converter, so it should be easier to monitor power. However, without a method of communicating status such as an LCD display or Wi-Fi, power monitoring really isn't that useful. Lastly, I found that bearings at each joint in my spot micro build added a lot of stability. Adding bearings to the joints in this robot would add more complexity to the design and take more time to develop. Also, considering that this is a smaller and lighter robot with six legs to support its weight, Bearings may be less important. To build this robot, I can leverage a lot of experience from my previous work. In previous videos, I was able to control and zero hobby servos, apply inverse kinematics, 
animate the walking gate with keyframe animation, and fabricate a mechanical structure with 3D printing. There are still some unknowns to deal with. First off, I need to test the power consumption requirements. In my spot micro build, I was able to power the servos directly from the 7.4 volt battery. Micro servos would prefer a voltage between 4.8 and 6 volts. The Pico wants a voltage between 1.8 and 5.5 volts. That means that I need a voltage around 5 volts that can power all the servos and the Pico. I don't know how much current the servos are going to need, so I don't know if I can power everything off the same buck converter. Perhaps I could look at other battery options. I think I can get double A's to run around 5 volts, though I don't know if they will be able to provide enough current. I also have to figure out how to get enough PWM signals to control all 18 servos. Looking at the specs for the Pico, I see that it only supports 16 PWM channels, which means I won't be able to control two of the servos. I could use an I2C servo controller like I did for my spot micro build. This would add to the cost and complexity of the build. The common PCA9685 chip could be used as an external servo controller and would provide an additional 16 PWM channels. With the Pico, that would give me a total of 32 PWM channels, which is more than I need. However, this means that I would have to maintain two different software interfaces for controlling the servos. Alternatively, I could use two external servo controllers to control all the servos, which would mean that I would only have one software interface to maintain, which uses two separate ports. However, since one of the goals is affordability, I'm leaning towards using only one external servo controller. The walking gate for a hexapod will be different than the walking gate I used for my spot micro build. My spot micro build relies on quick fast steps because he needs to support himself on only two feet while he's taking a step. With a hexapod, it can afford to have three or more feet on the ground at any one time. So it should be more stable, but building a proper walking gate may take some time and experimentation. Finally, I need to decide on a control mechanism. I will likely need to add either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth support so that I can control the robot remotely. I'm leaning towards Wi-Fi as that may be the easiest option to implement. Moving forward, the first thing I need to do is test power consumption. That is going to determine what kind of batteries I need, which will affect the design of the chassis. Then I can start designing the mechanical structures in CAD. With that done, I can 3D print all the parts and start the assembly. The only task left is to program it. If you think this project will be interesting, please be sure to give me a like. If you want to see how this project evolves, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.